Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching as always. Today I have a ton of Rocket Lab updates I want to go through with you as I was away for about a week and there's been a lot that's been happening lately. Even in the past couple days there's been several large pieces of news that I think investors should be aware of. Before we dive into that I hope you'll consider subscribing as every new subscriber really helps out the channel so much. And I also have a quick message from this video's sponsor. Thank you so much to Nutshell for sponsoring this video. If you're tired of cheap, poorly made phone cases and holsters, then today's sponsor, Nutshell, is for you. They make premium handcrafted phone holsters using only the highest quality, genuine leather and come with a two-year warranty in the event of any problems. Nutshell is offering an exclusive 10% discount code for viewers of this channel with code DAVEG or by clicking the link in the description down below. I have a couple different models myself and I can confirm that they're all very high quality and it's great not to have my pockets overflowing with phones and wallets during my workday. Nutshell is also a New Zealand based small business so if you happen to be a Kiwi and like supporting local as well, definitely give them a look. Thank you again to Nutshell for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So first of all, just starting off with the stock price. If you haven't been paying attention closely, you may not have realized it, but it's actually been a very strong run for Rocket Lab over the past month or two, actually going from the 3.5-ish range all the way up to 4.5. That's a very solid run in a pretty short period of time. Of course, if you zoom out further, it looks less good as we were all the way up in the high fives back in early 2024, but nevertheless, uh, heading in the right direction over the past couple months. Let's see if that momentum can continue going forward. So I hope if you were looking to add more shares, you were able to load up on those in the low threes. Obviously, that's a great return already. Okay, first of all, we had the 49th Electron launch just the other day. Flawless launch, as always, from New Zealand. Uh, great video, and don't have a lot to say about this one. Unfortunately, I was unable to see it live, but uh, went off without a hitch, as I always expect it to right now, and soon will be on to number 50. That launch was obviously for NASA with their climate satellites called Prefire and ICE. Speaking of launch number 50, it's already scheduled for Kinesis. It will deploy five satellites of a 25 satellite constellation for a French Internet of Things company or IOT. The mission will be called No Time to Lose and is scheduled to launch from Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand during a 14-day launch window opening on June 19th. This is the first of five dedicated launches for Kines, so there should be plenty more where this comes from after the first launch gets going. In terms of upcoming launches, we have a handy-dandy chart here created by friend of the channel, Naylor, who's also a active member on the Discord community, and we can see here in 2024 Q2, we're looking at about four launches for the quarter, which is pretty solid numbers. If we do end up with four in Q1 as well as four in Q2, that makes eight in the first half of the year. Obviously, that puts them on pace for 16. Not quite what we're hoping for. The company still thinks they can hit more like 17 to 20, which means they will have to pick up the pace in the back half of the year, but that is actually not uncommon at all. Seems to be some seasonality if you look back in previous years. Uh, Q1 generally fairly light. Right before I went to go post this video, actually, there was a new Archimedes video posted by Rocket Lab. Obviously, they are working on the Archimedes engine as they prepare for that hot fire we've all been so excited about. They're letting us know that the engine has been installed and the leak checks are now complete. Test stand infrastructure checks are complete as well as LNG and the lock system flow tests, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> um, the engine and stand operations have been validated. So next up, they will be engine firing dry runs before they introduce the locks and methane for the actual hot fire. So exciting progress from the team. I do have to wonder a little bit if this is in response to a video just posted by Stoke today. They showed a picture, or a picture rather, they did show a picture of their new engine for their Stoke Nova rocket hot firing for the first time. The two engines seem to have been neck and neck lately with Stoke Nova slightly in the lead, and I wonder if Rocket Lab just wanted to remind everyone and say, hey, we're still here too, we're almost there as well. Sometimes when you look at the timing of these tweets, it can be a little funny. Of course, it could just be a coincidence as well. 
In addition to that, Rocket Lab did post a more in-depth, longer video on Archimedes just recently. Uh, not a ton of pertinent information here. It looks pretty cool. You can see the team working at it. Some of the facilities we just saw that going overnight, so clearly they're working through the night there. Um, yeah, they seem like an engaged and relatively young bunch, which is nice to see. And uh, yeah, just a, a nice video to check out if you haven't seen it already on Rocket Lab's YouTube channel. So uh, this was an exciting piece of news that was just announced recently. Rocket Lab signed preliminary terms to receive up to $23.9 million in funding under the CHIPS Act to expand production of semiconductors that power spacecraft. Now, this CHIPS Act, uh, from what I believe is the government trying to push to get more, you know, those high-tech chips manufactured in the United States versus out in Taiwan or other countries around the world. Um, this is actually for Solero space grade solar cells which uh, apparently apply to these chips uh, to this chips bill so they'll be receiving that funding to enable rocket lab to, to increase production in their albuquerque new mexico facility for those solar panels this would create more than 100 manufacturing jobs as well um, that solero acquisition continuing to pay dividends and expand if you'll remember they purchased the whole company for something like 80 million dollars so today they're receiving this 24 million as well as an additional 25.5 million dollars from the state of new mexico so almost 50 million dollars they're receiving from the government to expand their business that's you know over half of what they paid for the business to start with and should hopefully allow their production to spool up rapidly. I have no doubt this has a lot to do with that massive $150 million contract for solar cells they did receive from a prime and that they mentioned in the last earnings call. So yeah, I would say that is very good news for Rocket Lab. Probably flies under the radar a little bit because it's not a rocket that goes up into the air and has lots of amazing flames, but extremely important for the space systems business. Uh, next up, interesting post here on the Rocket Lab subreddit, so definitely a good place to hang out if you're not familiar with it. This one's a little bit of an older post, so sorry I haven't shared it sooner, but basically Rocket Lab looks like they're developing an in-house thruster for space. There was some speculation a while back that Rocket Lab might want to acquire the Apollo Fusion business from Astra. Astra acquired that themselves and it is a thruster business, but looks like Rocket Lab is instead opting to develop their own thruster. And we can see here this team lead in ion propulsion will be working to develop that thruster. So it'll be very exciting when that comes online. It's obviously not good for getting spacecraft to orbit. You need rockets for that, but it can allow satellites to maneuver and raise their orbits when they're in space, things of that nature. Continuing on, another post that's a little bit older, but this account, Starship24, quite a good one. He he semi-regularly visits the Wallops facilities to check out what progress Rocket Lab has been up to. And you can see the shell of Rocket Lab's neutron integration facility just five minutes from the launch site. Does look like it's almost nearing completion, at least the exterior. You have to assume they're gonna be working on the interior a bit. Thank you so much to Starship for continuing to share pictures of their progress with us. There's the old tent structure they had, which I believe is temporary and will be going down eventually. Uh, this is where they will be integrating all the various pieces of Neutron and putting it together for launch. Uh, there was some speculation here recently that Rocket Lab might have a surprise haste launch for us due to navigational warnings appearing in the area from Wallops from June 12th to 15th. Uh, unfortunately, it has been confirmed now that this is some sort of sounding rocket and it's not going to be a haste launch, at least from my understanding. So uh, we can stand down on watching for a haste launch on this front. And then in terms of insider sales, again, this is a little bit of older news, but figured I'd just touch on it. So we did have back on May 23rd, Adam Spice and Arjun Campani 
selling some Rocket Lab shares. Uh, Adam Spice selling 63,000 and Arjun selling 30,000. Uh, I've addressed this many times previously. Basically, they have to sell some, at least Adam does for tax purposes because he gets paid majority in shares and it's not really something to worry about, but there is a thread here by TimX94 on Twitter. This is a bit of an older thread, but I always recommend you to read it if you're at all worried about these insider sales. They're all pre-scheduled, and it really goes through why Adam needs to sell. Less than 6% of his compensation was in money. The remainder of the 94% is in stock rewards. And when he receives stock, he needs to pay taxes on it. So the only way to pay taxes is to sell some shares. Uh, goes into a ton of depth in this thread. So if you're interested at all, I highly encourage you to check it out. Adam Spice, at least at the time of this thread, was still owning 5.4 million shares and definitely is incentivized for the company to continue to succeed. In other news, we did recently have a interview of Peter Beck on Event Horizon. If you're not too familiar with this podcast slash YouTube channel, it's a great one. Not so much about the financial side of the company, more about technology and space and interesting futurism concepts. Uh, talking a lot about Neutron and strategies for that on this podcast. So if you're interested in that kind of thing and the more technical sides of things, you can definitely check that out on Event Horizons YouTube channel. And then we did have a couple conferences recently. I often like to share clips of them. I didn't get to do that this time around, but there is a thread here from Space Stock Equities on Twitter, who is a great follow as well. And some of the people who run that account are even in the Discord community, if I understand correctly. Uh, they did take some highlights for us of what Adam Spice said at the conference. Uh, continues to believe that the hot fire will be before the end of the quarter. They're still set on that $350 million capital raise being for M&A, so acquisitions. Uh, if you look forwards three to five years from now, I would fully expect for them to own assets in orbit and those assets being monetized on a recurring basis. So that gives you a good timeline of when you can expect Rocket Lab's own satellites to launch. Not very far away from now, really, when you think about the state of Neutron also said that they currently have a $1 billion backlog and it's now time for us to turn that into a $2 billion backlog, which is of course quite bullish if they can uh, once again double that backlog as they seem to keep doubling it fairly regularly. The other interesting thing is that we had a Stiefel cross-sector insight conference just recently where Adam was speaking. Now, usually these get posted on Rocket Lab's investor relations website. This one has not been to date. If you are interested in what Adam had to say in this conference, luckily Tim has our back once again. He found the link here. If you want to check it out, it is on his Twitter page. You can click on it and go to Stiefel's website and register and listen to the conference. Don't think there's a ton of new important information there, but he did say that NSSL is going to be delayed one year and that they are now looking at more like 17 to 20 launches for the year for Electron. So thank you once again, Tim. I'll try to not make the entire show here, just me reading off your Twitter, but it's hard because uh, your Twitter is very good. So <laughs> I guess that's a compliment for you. Um, Off Nominal is actually going to have Peter Beck on their podcast very soon. This show will be live in 44 hours, Off Nominal, episode 155. I really love this podcast, so I'd recommend checking it out as well. Those guys are a lot of fun talking about the space industry, so I can't wait to hear what Peter has to say on this one. He was originally scheduled to go on Off Nominal several weeks back, but had to reschedule um before the earnings call, I believe it was. Finally, not too pertinent to the actual company, but Peter Beck was recognized by the British monarchy and knighted for his efforts in developing the aerospace industry in New Zealand. So congratulations to Peter on the well-deserved recognition, and I guess from now on, we'll have to call him Sir Peter. I've already seen all sorts of funny pictures online of him dressed up as a knight, <laughs> although I'm not sure it really fits with a rocket engineer. So that's the Rocket Lab news. I have for you today. Obviously exciting that Archimedes looks like it's getting closer and closer to firing for the first time. We had information from a few different conferences, launches from the rockets, and uh, yeah, that big 
$50 million announcement of additional funding for Rocket Lab's solar business expansion is very exciting as well. Hope you guys found this interesting and useful. If you did, please do consider hitting that subscribe button or if you're already subscribed, the like button as well. It really helps out the channel growth, which has slowed a little bit recently and just trying to get that going again. So thank you to every new subscriber. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.